Hey guys, this is Mr. Herbst here, and today's focus is going to be on recombinant DNA technology and gene cloning. Now when you see this word right here, recombinant, it sort of deters you away as being sort of a big word. But actually the root word there is recombine. So it's where we like take two segments of DNA and sort of recombine them into one segment of DNA. Another thing we're going to do in this video is introduce you to this idea of gene cloning. So let's go ahead and explore that a little bit. Now the first thing that I'm going to introduce to you guys is that there's a difference between cloning a whole organism and gene cloning. For example, when we clone an organism, we create an organism that is an exact copy of another. So it's kind of like where we take a cat and we kind of clone it or copy it so it's genetically identical to the original cat. Now with gene cloning, we actually create identical copies of a specific gene. So if we recall what a gene is, a gene is a little segment of DNA that codes for a specific physical trait. Now in your body, you have like 21,000 different genes. So guess which one is easier to do? Yeah, that's right. Gene cloning is a lot easier to do than complete whole organism cloning. And the reason being is, you know, in, with a human being, we have 23 of these things right here called chromosomes. If we were to say that this thing right here in black is one gene and we want to just clone that one specific gene, that's a lot easier to do than to clone the entire organism which has all 23 chromosomes. So my focus is going to begin right here with recombinant DNA. As I've already explained, recombinant DNA is sort of like we take uh, DNA from two organisms and recombine them into one segment of DNA. So it's where like we, we take DNA that's been kind of created artificially. And as I've stated, it's DNA from two or more organisms is incorporated into one single DNA molecule. And if we take a look down right here, we, if we say that this is the DNA from one organism right here, and this is the DNA from another organism right here, it's sort of like where we use these uh, certain enzymes to kind of recombine them in a one segment of DNA right here. And that one segment of DNA now has the traits of both of those original segments of DNA. Now actually we find lots of examples of recombinant DNA in our own society. For example, we find these transgenic organisms where actually we have living organisms in our own environment that had foreign DNA sort of inserted into them. Some examples of that is fluorescent animals. Now as bizarre as this sounds, this monkey right here actually can glow in the dark. And what we did is we took a gene from some sort of glowing animal such as a, a jellyfish or one of those underwater animals that glow in the dark and we inserted that gene for glowing into monkeys. And as bizarre as that is, that's actually a real thing that we've done. Another thing that we can do is where we have strawberries that resist frost. Every year uh, around October, November, we have this really rough frost that will kill any plants that are living on the ground. Now, if we have some strawberries that can resist frost, now they'll be able to survive a little bit longer into the year, thus making more crops for the farmer. So why do we do this? Well, the, the implications should be obvious why we do this. Uh, we can make more crops or, or make crops more efficient. Now, some lesser known examples of transgenic organisms are things like bacteria, where we use bacteria to grow uh, human insulin. Now, how does that all work? We're going to focus that on in a little bit. But why would we want to grow human insulin? Well, if you think about what actually insulin is, if you know anybody that has diabetes, or maybe you have diabetes yourself, uh, chances are pretty good that person is on artificial insulin. Now, that insulin has to come from somewhere. That insulin is actually grown by bacteria, where we took the human gene for growing insulin and inserted it into bacteria. Now, the bacteria grows insulin for us, and we use that as medicine. Now, to understand this whole process of how we use gene cloning, you sort of have to understand a few terms. The first term is restriction enzymes. Restriction enzymes are natural enzyme proteins. They're found in bacteria, and they cut DNA molecules in specific locations. So they actually sort of uh, produce like this zigzag shape. Uh, kind of like this. If we zoom in over here, if we say that all of this right here is a segment of DNA, right in here, 
Well, right here is called the restriction site, right in here. And restriction enzymes are going to come in and they're going to sort of cut open the uh, that little restriction site right there. So we actually produce two segments of DNA where here would be segment one and here would be segment two. So as I've explained, a restriction site is sort of a little section on DNA that allows for the restriction enzymes to come in and sort of chop those little segments of DNA in half. Now the way it works is where we actually have uh, a little segment of DNA like this. And we have this right here would be called the restriction site. This whole thing in green. And we have these little enzymes come in and they're going to go ahead and chop right here in between the DNA. So ultimately we're going to get two segments of DNA that are kind of like staggered. Anyway guys, don't freak out if you fully haven't understood this concept of restriction enzymes and restriction sites. We're going to focus on that a lot more in class. Anyway guys, this is Mr. Herbst and I'm signing off folks. Y'all have a nice day.